All right, so we've been talking uh, about you know, finding derivatives and so forth. But I want to make sure it's clear on the, the relationship between the graph of f and the graph of f prime. So what I've got right here is I've, I've sketched a graph of f for you, okay? And from that, I want us to be able to sketch what the f prime graph looks like. So you should be able to just look at a function and be able to, from that function, determine what the graph of f prime is going to look like, okay? So let me just put a little axis here for the f prime. So this will be my f prime graph right here, okay? What I have to keep in mind is that f prime is the derivative of f which is, again, another word for slope. So f prime is the slope of f. That is a key, okay? f prime is the slope of f. So the thing we have to keep in mind is the y values of f prime are the slopes of f. So again, the y values, the y values of f, f prime are the slopes of f. Okay, so that's kind of the constant thing we have to keep in mind here. All right? So, you know, what I have going here, I will always start with, if I, there's ever a place on the graph of f where the slope is zero, that's always where I will start. Okay? So I notice right here that at x equals a, this graph has a slope of zero. Okay? It would have a horizontal tangent line, which means it has a slope of zero. So that means that x equals a on my graph of f prime, since I know that, you know, f has a slope of 0 at x equals a, f prime is going to have a y value of 0 at x equals a. Okay? Again, because the slopes of, I'm sorry, the y values of f prime are the slopes of f. That y value should be 0 since at x equals a, the slope of f is 0. All right? Now, if I look to the left-hand side of that, uh, of x equals a, I notice that the slope of f is negative. Okay? The slope of f is negative. Now, it looks like it starts out quite steep, and as time goes by, it gets less and less and less steep. So I'm going to kind of make up some, you know, made-up slopes right here. So let's just say that slope I said was like m is equal to, let's say, negative 10, for instance. That's pretty steep. And as I get in here, say around 0, it looks like it's not as steep anymore. Maybe now it's m equals negative 5. And then as I get down here, it's less steep. Maybe now it's m is equal to negative 2, for instance. Okay, so as I'm moving from left to right, the slopes are negative, but they, the slopes are going from negative 10 to negative 5, negative 2, and so forth. Okay, so it should be that my y values, as I move from left to right, carry that same property of those slopes. So, you know, whatever this x value happens to be right here, okay, at the slope of negative 10, you know, let's say that looks like, you know, about right there, that means that the y value on f prime should be negative 10. So somewhere, you know, around down here. Okay, and I'm just kind of just guesstimating this. And then at x equals 0, if the slope of that graph is negative 5, that means at x equals 0, the y value of this graph should be about negative 5. Okay, well, it should be whatever the slope is, I should say about. If the slope is negative 5, the y value would be negative 5. And as I move further over to the right, let's say at this x value here, okay, since at that particular x value the slope was negative 2, at this x value here the slope should also be negative 2. So, you know, I'm just kind of putting it in approximate places, but if I connect all of these right here, okay, I've got something looking like this, and, you know, it should follow along that line right there. All right. So, you know, I'm trying to make the connection between, you know, if I see at a particular x value, if I see what the slope of the graph is on f, if I go to that same x value on f prime, Whatever that slope was on f should be the y value on f prime, okay? And, you know, looking at this, this makes sense to me because if I look to the left of a, again, the slopes of f are negative, okay? And here I notice all the y values of f prime are negative. So that, you know, makes, makes sense to me to draw something like that, okay? And, you know, closer to a, the slopes are, you know, pretty close to zero, and as I get further and further to the left, the slopes get steeper. So you can see the close to a, the y values here are zero, and as you move further to the left, you know, the y values decrease in value, okay? just like the slopes do. Now, on the other side, the same thing occurs, okay? I could draw out all the points if I wanted to, but on the right-hand side of A, the slopes are positive, okay? And they start out as somewhat smaller positive numbers, and it starts out at the slope of zero here, and then it's just a little bit greater than the slope of zero, but then the slope gets bigger and bigger as it moves further to, as the x values move further to the right. So that means the y values should be positive and get larger and larger as they move to the right. 
So that right there is an example of the sketch of f prime. All right? And again, just want to make sure that on the right-hand side of A on the graph of f, we know that the slopes are positive. The graph of f is increasing. Notice on the right-hand side of f prime, the y values of f prime are positive. So that's a connection that should be made. Wherever you see a negative slope on f, you should see negative y values on f prime, you know, below the axis. Uh, the x-axis, and wherever you see positive slopes on f, you should see positive y values on f prime. So that's one basic example of how to sketch an f prime graph. Now, let's just say this graph right here, uh, I want to make it clear also that if I were to shift this graph up or down without shifting it at all left or right, the derivative graph would not change. Because just think, if I, if I tried to do the same graph, and I know I'm not perfect, so it's not going to be exact same, but if I just shifted this same graph down, and I know that doesn't look exactly the same. If I shifted that down, okay, x amount of units, whatever, you know, 5 units, 10 units, whatever it might be, okay, well, the y values of this graph would have changed, the slopes wouldn't have, okay? At any particular x value, the slopes of the graph would be the same. So therefore, the derivative graph, all it tells us about is slopes. So that means the derivative graph would be the same, regardless of whether this graph was shifted up or down.